Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to Josie's Art School, episode number 199. That's right, there are 199 art lessons here on this channel, and I cannot believe we're about to cr cross that threshold of 200 art lessons, and I couldn't be more pleased. Um, it's a little dream that I started a few years back about teaching art to uh, kids and to adults. Um, there's actually, um, in one of the videos, when I first started on Patreon, my goal was to become a full-fledged art teacher. That has actually happened, and I'm just thrilled and really truly believe that if you set your heart on it, you really can make a dream come true. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Robin Norgren. I run Josie's Art School. I also run a company called Bright Child Montessori because I'm also a Montessori teacher. And today our theme is going to be in the style of Basquiat. It's going to be that uh, iconic dinosaur that you've seen in many of his paintings and also the crown. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who are new here, make sure like and subscribe, share this video. And if you are not on Patreon, uh, I would love to invite you there, become a part of my community and support the work that I do out here uh, in the world. All right, let's get started. So what I'm going to be working on is a nine by 12 piece of paper. Um, I'm going to be using all styles of acrylic paint. So here is what I have on hand. You actually can use whatever you have on hand, but I am using a black and a white uh, from Apple Barrel, and it is snow white and jet black. <clears throat> I'm also gonna add in a little bit of uh, this Laguna, just to give it a little bit of interest. I will be using a little of the vanilla, and then I'm going to use um, a bright red, and I'm going to somehow develop a gold color. We'll see how that comes together. Um, I might end up just basically using this sun-kissed peach. But as you can see, in the example that I have here, I'm using a lot of blue, a lot of black, yellow, red, so I'm really staying that primary color, um, 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 uh, set of, of paints. And the reason why I do that is sometimes I like to go with simply primary colors so that the focus is not necessarily on what types of colors that I've developed, but on what the, um, the feature uh, or focal point of the drawing is. And that's many times you can see that with Basquiat, he has lots of different themes going on, but you can always see your eye drawn to one particular theme. So that's what my goal is here. All right, I am also going to be using a sponge brush um, just to put the paints on quickly. Um, but you don't have to do that. So obviously you can always uh, pause the video, slow it down, go back. But just for la for um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to be using this to spread my paint most um, quickly onto my paper. So um, you would think that maybe I'm going to draw the dinosaur first. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to first take a couple of colors and mix them together. Um, so I am using Laguna. Um, I'm going to use some of the jet black. And I'm going to use the Snow White and I'm going to mix it together, not too, um, you know, perfectly. I really actually want just that mix blending onto the painting. So really just giving it um, just just a wash on the background um, and then from there just let um, the, the page inspire me for how I'm going to create the dinosaur. So I'm going to blend it together on my palette here and then I'm just going to wash it over. So as you can see, if you're not careful, mostly what shows up is the black. So I'm gonna make sure and pick up more of that blue and the white. But more than anything, what I'm trying to do is just getting that color on the page. And then from there, I'm going to actually draw the dinosaur. So I'm going in lots of different directions. And again, if you haven't uh, looked at Basquiat's paintings uh, lately, um, words that might come to mind when you're looking at his paintings is chaotic or busy. But the more you focus your eyes on any of his paintings, the more you realize that there really is 
some sort of um, cohesion in what he's doing. And so that's what I'm going to attempt to accomplish today with what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna bring that camera a little closer so you can see what I've done. Actually, that, um, that blue turned to a, into a nice sage right there on the page. So let me bring that a little closer so you can see. There we are. And then side by side with the one that I have there. All right, so from here, I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer. I'm going to start to draw the dinosaur. Now, so that you can see it a little better, I probably will draw it on a regular piece of paper so you can see where I'm going with it. Or actually, I got a better idea. I'm actually gonna draw it in white so that you can see it. Okay. So I'm using my white paint and I'm gonna use a larger paintbrush. And what I'm gonna start with first is I'm going to draw the face. Now you don't want to put it up too high because you want to be able to add that iconic crown at some point. But you start with a circle and then you know with a dinosaur you've got almost like a puffin kind of look. So you're going to draw, you can draw a circle into it if you want. We're actually going to be filling that color, that, um, that first circle in. But just so you can get kind of a sense of the dinosaur structure. So you've got two circles overlapping there. Okay, and then from here, you're going to add uh, kind of like a bowling pin shape for the shape of the body. And again, you don't have to get it too perfect. You're just building it onto the paper. Yes. And I, I always like to put a little on the paper and then go back and actually fill in with details just so I'm not so... Um, focused on trying to get something perfectly put on my page. So you've got your head and you've got your body. From there, let's add a tail. So again, I'm just kind of doing a triangle shape going out behind the body. And you can actually do it on this side or on the other side, just depending on how you want the dinosaur to look and also where, um, where he's walking if he's walking in your drawing. Okay, and if you're going to do something like a T-Rex, you want to do the arms, but you want to do maybe one arm a little bit shorter than the other arm. And again, this is more of a paint, uh, a playful sketch of the dinosaur. You don't want to have to feel like you've got to get it super perfect. And so here you are already, you're seeing kind of the shaping of the dinosaur head and then the body. And then here's the arms and then the legs. So again, you can have the legs going walking forward. or one in midair, okay? And then finally, up at the top, so we don't forget it, we wanna go ahead and add that crown. So I'm making the line, and then I'm adding just three triangles. You can do any shape of a crown that you want. This is just a traditional look of the crowns that you'll see in some of the Basquiat paintings. Okay, so there we have it. We have just the major features of this. And then from here, you're gonna to start to add in your details. Now, because I've done a wash in the back, that allows it to dry pretty quickly, right? And then from here, because I used more of a dry brush, it's not super wet. And because I'm not keeping the shape fully, I'm just kind of sketching this out, it doesn't matter if I add more color on there um, what, um, you know, if it starts to blend in a little bit. But what I would say to do is decide what color you would like the dinosaur. Now for me, because the back is gray, <clears throat> I want it to have um, a little more pop to it. So I'm going to make the dinosaur, the base of the dinosaur, black. So again, I'm not gonna trace over the white completely. I'm actually just going to paint in, and then if I wanna change the shape of the snout, for example, I'm just gonna leave the white that I initially put on there almost like a, um, a shadow, right, around the body, okay? But again, I'm not gonna get too precious with it because I've gotta add in eyes and I've got to add in the teeth and I want to add in um, some scales. 
So this again is just to give me the shape of the dinosaur. And then as I add in more detail, it'll start to come more to life. Okay. So I don't want you to get worried at this point uh, if it's not looking perfectly. Because again, we're still just at the planning stages. And what I would say, I what I love about um, Basquiat's painting is that there is a sense of play to it. And that is something that is always draws me to the art that I enjoy, is that there is a playfulness in it. It's not that it um, doesn't have like some context for other messages, but it definitely also invites you in with that playful component, okay? So here we are here. Now again, you can make the decision as well to add black here. Now I'm gonna try to put a little bit of gold into um, the crown, so I'm not gonna color it in completely with the black paint because I really want um, the gold to show up and because I'm painting pretty quickly, I want that to dry pretty fast. All right, so, so far, and this is what I love, is that when you don't get so strict about how the, um, the um, proportions are, you can see already it's starting to kind of manifest into a dinosaur, right? All right, so now as if we look at this original painting over here, I should say my original painting, not Basquiat's painting, um, you'll see that I've added some red and some gold and white details here. So from here, you can decide, again, if yours is a little wet, you can uh, pause the video and come back a little later. Um, or if you're using another medium besides paint, you can immediately go on to the next um, color choice that you're adding. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I'm actually using a King's Gold Apple Barrel. If you have ever um, thought about buying the Apple Barrel product but wasn't sure, you know, because there's so many like more high quality, I guess you would say, priced um, acrylics, I really do find that it, it, is, not, it is a really good um, paint to use. So I would recommend it, and you can buy it usually at um, department stores or even like at your, your um, Michaels or your um, Walmart. Very easily available. All right, so I'm adding it in there, but I'm also going to add detail, a little bit of scales along the back. And again, as you can see right away, this dinosaur is starting to get a little bit more character. So I'm gonna add it on the back side, and then I'm gonna come a little bit forward. And again, it doesn't bother me that there's a little bit of wetness in the, uh, the black paint, because my desire is to allow that blending to give more interest to what I'm doing. So I actually really love it. Okay, so from there, I've got my basic outline, and now I'm going to think about adding a little bit of red into my painting. So again, I'm using the Apple Barrel Bright Red. Probably don't need too terribly much. I will need to clean my brush because I really do want a bright, vibrant looking red. Okay. And so from here again, I'm going to do a little bit on the eyes. I might have to outline that a little bit. A little bit for the mouth or the tongue. And then give it a little bit of a sinister look and outline those scales along the back. Now, I'm gonna be super careful <laughs> to not turn this into pink, right? Because that could easily happen since I have both black and or red and white on the palette. So from here, See if you can see it a little bit more on your camera. I'm going to go around the white. Again, trying to be careful. I do not want pink to show up too terribly much. But also, you know, want the sinisterness of the teeth. So add that in. Okay. 
And then as I'm looking at this, I want to pull back a little bit and see if there might be some other places that I want to add some details. So maybe some uh, the nails for the for the dinosaur feet and arms. And then I want to maybe add, I have more of a gold color. So this is a Craft Smart. Actually, it says it's honey mustard, but it does have, it reads, meaning that when I put it on, pa on paper, it actually does seem a little bit of a, have a little bit of a gold tint to it. So I wanna come back up here in the crown and I want to add a little more to it and you can feel free to do that as well so this feels a little bit more like gold than that yellow was reading to my eyes and then maybe add a little bit in the body okay so there we are, here's two different renditions of Basquiat. Now here I wrote the word king. You could add some sort of word here as well. Um, like, I'm gonna put the word go, question mark or an exclamation mark. So again, it's having fun with um, the style and really kind of experiencing what kind of freedom it is to just kind of take your paint and move it around the paper and really see what comes together. So again, let's take a look. <clears throat> here's the example of what we started with. So I used blue in the background here. And then here is what we came up with together. So. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and I hope it inspires you to go and research a little bit more about Basquiat and uh, yeah, really appreciate the work that he has given to us and I hope it inspires your own painting style for you to try new things and maybe be more loose with your painting style. Well, I thank you so much for coming by. Please make sure and read down in the description so you can find out about our, my art kits, my sewing kits. I also carry art journal kits for you. And then, of course, make sure and support me on Patreon and become one of my patrons. I would truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.